Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? This is Kiko. Now, today I'm going to be answering questions about my study abroad experience. Now, these questions are from my university and they sent them to me to record on video. So I'm going to be answering these questions for them as well as making my own personal video. And they're just like a bunch of questions. There's a lot of questions. I'm not going to answer all of them, but yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first question, what was your most memorable moment? Now, this one's kind of hard to answer because there's a lot of memorable moments like that I had when I was in Japan I went twice or a total of like a, a year and a half about but I guess one of the best memories I can say that I have is um, like going downtown and seeing the city lights I live in the Midwest and like right here we don't have any city lights um, I live in a small town so just walking downtown seeing the city lights getting some beer drinking you know getting a little bit tipsy wasted whatever and then having a big bowl of ramen at like 3 a.m. 4 a.m. 5 a.m. whatever you know before I went back home just went to like a ramen restaurant which is open like 20 four hours and like a big bowl of ramen you know why you have like the alcohol flowing really good memories man like I did that you know a bunch of times by myself with friends with new friends and it's just it's just a good time overall um, here in the states you only have like McDonald's or like whatever restaurants open 24 hours but yeah walking downtown city lights intoxicated eating ramen I guess that's my most memorable moment how do you think you've changed as a result of living in a different country that's a good question because you know I grew up here in a small town and like after I graduated high school I went to California for the first time and I thought California was like mind-blowing because it was like you know lots of cities city life different kinds of people you know like a whole different lifestyle over there and I've also visited Mexico when I was younger like I still visit Mexico and I also know that Mexico is like way different from here in America so I've experienced I guess like the urban and rural life here in the states and also like the Mexican life down in Mexico so when I went to Japan it was like completely different from anything I've ever experienced and one of the things that changed me is like it opened my mind kind of like you just kind of realize like in your life you have so many possibilities so many options like so many different things you can do in life living in japan it's just like it's a whole different life out there i don't know how to explain it like, i feel like i have like my american life and my japanese life and it's like two different lives instead of like just the one life you're living pretty much what i'm trying to say is that japan became like my second home it became my home i met different people different experiences new people in my life new like favorite restaurants just new things that became familiar to me so when I went back a second time it's like I resumed my life in Japan and then I came back to the States and resumed my life in the States it just opens your mind you know and it just kind of shows you like you know you do have options in life and you don't have to stick to just one life <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say what new experiences did you have abroad that shocked or surprised you I guess just like Japanese culture is way different than American culture I was in a situation where I was where I met some new Japanese people and I was with an American friend and I after we set our introductions, the Japanese people we were with, they started to conversate. But me and my friend, we couldn't really talk because we didn't speak Japanese. So after like a couple minutes of them conversating, we were all kind of like in a circle and they stopped talking all of a sudden. I wanted to say something, my friend wanted to say something, but we didn't know what was going on because we didn't understand the conversation. And it got really quiet and we felt very awkward because we were quiet for like, it was like around five minutes, like nobody said anything. And we were just like in a circle staring at each other, looking at each other. Um, I would look up at the Japanese people we met and they would just smile and nod. <laughs> I look down, look back up, smile and on. And it was really weird because we just met them. Now, silence. Silence in Japan is normal. And you know, when you are with people you know, like your family or friends, if you're if you're silent, okay, that's fine. You know, you're used to it, you're familiar with them. But when you're in the presence of a stranger facing them and you're not saying anything, that can get very awkward. But then I learned very quick that that's kind of like a Japanese thing. They are very comfortable with silence and being silent in the presence of a stranger is normal, not awkward. Awkward. It is actually very comfortable for them. So while they were being very comfortable with each other and not saying anything, me and my friend, we were just feeling very awkward. <laughs> uh, I guess that's one thing that shocked me. In what ways are you staying connected to the people you met while abroad? So while I was abroad, I did meet a lot of friends, a lot of people. And in Japan, there's an application. It's kind of like WhatsApp. It's a texting, phone calling application. It, it is called Line. Usually when you're over there, you don't ask people for their phone number. You ask them for their line. Even like in a business setting, it is normal 
someone to ask like co-workers or like your boss or someone you just met for their line so line the application line is very very big over there and people that go to Japan I recommend that you download line because that's how you get into contact with people so that's the way I stay connected with friends over there and we do talk once in a while the friends I met over there are people that want to learn English and I want to learn Japanese so sometimes like they want to talk and practice English with me and sometimes I talk with them and practice Japanese or you know we just text each other catch up you know how you doing how you been you know all that kind of stuff so I stay connected with them through line um, I also have them like on other applications like Instagram and Facebook but normally we just uh, talk through line what made you want to study abroad in the location you chose I chose Japan because as a, as a kid I was very into Japanese entertainment and I would get like Japanese magazines that I couldn't read but I wanted to read so bad like the Japanese characters in college I finally got the chance to take Japanese classes you know because my university offered them so I took the Japanese classes started learning how to write the characters read them and started speaking with Japanese international students at my university which got me more interested in Japan then I studied abroad and now I want to go work over there in the future you know for a couple years that's my goal how did you spend your spring or fall break well I was in northern Japan um, that's where I was studying so during fall spring break all that I did travel to other cities I, I did go to Tokyo and you know cuz I gotta go if I'm going to Japan I gotta go visit Tokyo at least once right I went to southern Japan and I went to Nagasaki and Nagasaki is one of the cities that got um, one of the atomic bombs where the United States dropped an atomic bomb there I went there and I went to the museum the atomic bomb museum really really sad museum but you know I think it was a good experience to go there I also went to Australia I went to Australia because you know Japan is right there Australia is right there it is like a six seven hour flight but you know I went to Sydney Australia and you know I really enjoyed my time there too it was fun it was worth going but I do want to go back to other places in Japan there's many cities I want to visit that I haven't visited yet were you excited or nervous before you left I was more excited than nervous I was just ready to go to Japan before I went a lot of excitement I know my friend the one I went with she was very nervous and I had to try and calm her down because she was kind of like freaking out like what's gonna happen after we arrive and I'm like don't worry it's all gonna work out let's just just enjoy it so I was very excited definitely excited how has studying abroad shaped your future goals well like I said I want to go study Japanese while studying abroad and I do plan to continue studying Japanese because I do want to work there in the future what is your advice to someone considering studying abroad well if you're considering study abroad like I gotta say that if you have the time like I think you really should put like if you want to study abroad I think you should do it definitely put the effort in like it seems really scary at first and the process seems kind of complicated but the process it's in that complicated the university does help you out a lot also don't be scared like even if you go for like a year or half, half a year or whatever like a year is not a long time half a year is definitely not a long time and even going for like a summer like a summer study abroad experience I feel like that's not really a long time like like I guess the best way to explain it is if you go for a month to study abroad okay whatever you go for a month it's like a vacation you had fun half a year best way to explain it half a year is like kind of like a long vacation and the reason I say it's like a long vacation is because you arrive and everything is new everything you experience is new the food the culture the culture shock everything is new and it's gonna take you like that those six months it's gonna take you six months to get used to it half a year doesn't feel like that long to me because you go there everything is gonna be mind-blowing culture shock and after you finally get used to the lifestyle over there you're gonna be coming back home so one year is good in my opinion because you have those six months to get used to the culture shock be surprised by everything and then the last six months is gonna be you're actually gonna be living your life there you're gonna be living like for me like I actually started living my Japanese life like it became familiar it became my home like I said the first six months is more like a long vacation and then the following six months is like it's your home that's where you live everywhere you go like you've been there before you know what to do like every week you know go get your groceries you're paying your bills like you're actually living the life and you're not being like surprised by anything because nothing is new anymore and personally I think two years will be worth it but yeah if you want to go 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 do it I recommend a year but you know I think half a year is also good I recommend it and it definitely opens your mind what was your favorite museum and why yeah like I said I definitely gotta go with the um, atomic bomb museum in Nagasaki just being there you know like the atmosphere like seeing the spot where the bomb landed and then going into the actual museum seeing the pictures seeing things that got destroyed in the explosion like being displayed at the museum and just like the overall tone of the museum is like it's, it's really sad but it's like a really nice museum like it's worth going to like I think it's worth checking out but yeah I gotta say that one was my 
favorite. What was the first step you took towards getting registered for your study abroad program? Honestly, the first step is just setting up a meeting and finding out the information you need to find out. So, you know, set up a meeting with the study abroad office, go there, talk to them, find the information you need, and then decide if you're going to go through with it. And if you do decide to go, you know, you know, you just set up another meeting with them, to, uh, let them know that you decided to go, figure out the deadlines, plan ahead, and have fun out there. What is something that challenged you while studying abroad? Definitely the language barrier, but the language barrier is scary, but I was learning Japanese while over there. So talking to strangers, like when I talk to them, I would use my limited Japanese, but it was like a challenge to talk to people who don't speak English and you're forced, like I was forced to use Japanese and like putting myself in those situations, challenging, but fun in my opinion. So yeah, those were the questions and hopefully I was able to entertain you guys for a couple minutes. And if you want to see more videos like this, you know, let me know, drop a comment and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.